Hello and welcome back. I'm Matthew Lay, and now on this lesson we're going to talk about Fleming's right hand rule. So let's get started. In this lesson we have one simple objective, and that's just to determine the direction of conventional current flow in a conductor um, when we move it into the presence of the magnetic field lines. And of course we have to know the poles of the magnetic the magnets uh, for us to determine the direction of those magnetic field lines. Okay, so let's see how we can accomplish this. When we study this right hand rule, we're studying the work of this gentleman, John Ambrose Fleming. Um, he was an English engineer, uh, 1800s, 1900s. Um, this picture is from 1906. Uh, that's uh, when he's a little bit younger. He lived till in the 30s or 40s. And uh, so, electrical engineer, but he invented the vacuum tube. And uh, some people still use the term for a screen on a computer as a CRT. That CRT stands for cathode ray tube. Um, that was made possible by this gentleman and his invention of the vacuum tube. Or uh, uh, even uh, musicians today still use tube amps because they think they get a better sound out of that. If you've ever seen uh, Back to the Future where Marty turns on that really big amp speaker and it takes a while to warm up and you can see the needles moving as it's warming up. Those are the, the vacuum tubes in there warming up. At this point in time, um, this invention of the vacuum tube was considered the beginning of the electronics age. Uh, before then, we had electricity like electric lights and, and things like that but we didn't really get into electronics um, for radios and televisions and things like that till this vacuum tube was uh, created or invented. <clears throat> In his studies, he developed two basic rules. One is the one we're studying here, the right-hand rule, which is also termed the generator effect because it's going to generate a current in a conductor. And the other is the left-hand rule, and that's called the motor effect, and that's where we do the opposite. We, we put current in a conductor and put it in the presence of a magnetic field, and it makes the conductor move. Um, so that's the basic principles between either a generator or a motor. Okay, so let's look at this uh, right-hand rule. Um, Fleming's right-hand rule is pretty easy to apply. Um, if you can use it to determine conventional current uh, in a conductor when it is brought into the presence of a magnetic field. And uh, the uh, phenomenon is termed the generator effect, like we just spoke of. The uh, direction of conventional current is dependent on two different factors. The direction that the magnetic field lines are going, of course, are outside the magnet. They're always going to go from north to south. But the orientation of north and south as, uh, as um, compared to the movement of the conductor is going to determine conventional current or the direction that you move that conductor, whether up or down, in the case of uh, the examples that we're going to see here, is also going to have a determining factor on the direction that conventional current is going to flow in the conductor. Okay, so let's actually look at how we apply this. So if you place your thumb, first finger, and second finger of your right hand in mutually perpendicular position, you might think, what is that? Um, that means that your thumb and your first finger are 90 degrees from one another, but your second finger comes out at 90 degrees to your first finger and your thumb that is called mutually perpendicular. You're basically making the X, Y, and Z axis um, with your right hand. And then we can apply, um, we can assign a, a specific characteristic to each one of the fingers that we have. So for the thumb, that shall determine the direction that the conductor is moving in, okay? so. The easy way to remember that is thumb has the letter M in it, and movement begins with the letter M. So thumb movement, okay? The first finger um, shall be the direction that the field lines are moving in. And so my 
depiction up here in the upper right hand corner is we have north to the right and south to the left. So the magnetic field lines always move from north to south outside the magnet. So the your first finger would point from right to left in this particular example. And <clears throat> the first finger and field lines both start with the same letter. That's why I don't say index finger, I say first finger. So F for first, F for field is an easy way to remember um, the finger is for the field lines. And then the second finger shall be for conventional current. Okay, so um, we are always going to be studying conventional current. If you did study electron current flow, you'd have to use your left hand. Um, but in this case, we're always going to be using our right hand for the generator effect. And we're going to give our answers in conventional current. So the C and second finger will stand for current. Okay, and in this case, conventional current. Okay, so that's what we're ultimately trying to answer is which direction the current is flowing. So let's apply this to an actual problem. Okay, so I have uh, an example uh, magnetic field here where I have the north to the right and the south to the left and then my conductor. And then this arrow is saying that the motion is going to be in the upward fashion. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is hold my right hand in that mutually perpendicular fashion. So I'm going to hold it like it was in the previous slide. And my thumb is going to point in the direction of the <coughs> motion. And so it would be the up arrow here. It matches the up there <coughs> of the thumb. The... Second finger, I'm sorry, the first finger is going to be our field line. So that's going to be pointed from right to left. So those are our field lines. And then conventional current is going to uh, be pointing out of the slide. Um, I know the perspective of this hand is, is looks like a 45 degree angle. But if you hold your hand uh, up flat against the screen, you'll see that, uh, that you're second finger will actually be pointing out of the screen. And since conventional current flows out of the positive terminal of a battery or a power source, we are going to mark the conductor, the circle on the screen with the plus sign showing that current is flowing out of that point on the screen. Okay, let's look at another problem here. Okay, the right hand, again, we're going to hold in mutually perpendicular fashion. Um, but because now the movement is in the downward direction, uh, we're going to have to flip our hand over. So this, uh, this picture shows that the thumb is pointed down. The first finger is pointed still from right to left. And the second finger is now going to be pointed into the screen. And so conventional current flows into the negative terminal of the battery. And since it's flowing into the screen, or if you're doing this on your worksheet, it would be flowing into the piece of paper. We're going to mark it with a minus sign. So we put a minus sign right here to, to answer that question. Okay, let's look at one more. Okay, so here now the motion has been changed to the upward direction again but the battery the i'm sorry the, the poles of the magnetic uh, field lines have been reversed so north and, and south field lines are going to go from north to south outside of the magnet and so now our field lines are going from left to right and our conductor is moving up so i have my uh, hand here in mutually perpendicular fashion again. The thumb is pointed in the upward direction. The first finger is pointed from left to right now. And the second finger will be pointed back into the slide or um, on your piece of paper into the paper. And again, conventional current flows out of the positive of your power source and into the negative of your power source. So the uh, you're going to mark your paper with a minus sign showing that conventional current will be flowing into that piece of paper. So you get a minus sign there.
okay? To change the direction of current, um, you have one of two ways of doing that. You can change the motion of the conductor or you can change the magnetic field lines, okay? Now, if you notice that third example, I changed two things at once. I changed the magnetic field lines and I changed the conductor. So if two components are changed at the same time, the direction of the current will not change, okay? You, only, you should only change one thing at a time. Okay, so just very quick review here. Um, to change direction of current in a conductor using that uh, generator effect, our Fleming's right-hand rule, one could either, A, you could change the motion of the conductor as it's brought into the presence of that magnetic field, or you could change the direction of the magnetic field lines, basically reversing your north and south pole. So those are the two ways that you can change direction in uh, of conventional current in that conductor um, using those different principles. That concludes our presentation on Fleming's right-hand rule. I hope that was helpful, and we'll see you in the next video.